Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about the genetic disorders. Genetic disorders. Now in this genetic disorders, the first genetic disorder that we are going to discuss about, actually there are four different types of genetic disorders. The first genetic disorder that I'm going to discuss about are Mendelian disorders. Mendelian disorders. We'll discuss about uh, Mendelian disorders in detail. See what exactly this Mendel disorders include. It includes autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, X-linked dominant, X-linked recessive and Y-linked disorders. Okay, so these disorders follows Mendel's laws of inheritance. Whatever the Mendel, the Gregor John Mendel, who is the father of genetics, whatever the laws he proposed. So these diseases will follow those laws. Okay, Mendel's laws of inheritance. Especially for your exam, the point which I want you to know is, see, this Y-link disorders. Okay, Y-link disorders, they are also called as holandric inheritance. The, y the disorders which follows, the Y-linked the pattern, they are also called as Holandric disorders. Okay, so the second type of genetic disorders are non-Mendel disorders. The disorders which fall, which do not obey the Mendel's laws of inheritance. They are non-Mendelian disorders, which includes um, trinucleotide repeat diseases, trinucleotide repeat diseases. Okay, trinucleotide repeat diseases. They do not follow the Mendel's laws of inheritance. Mitochondrial diseases. Okay, mitochondrial diseases. Next, genomic imprinting. Okay, genomic imprinting followed by mosaicism. Okay, see these conditions, they do not follow Mendel's laws of inheritance. We'll discuss about first Mendelian disorders. Also, we'll discuss about the non-Mendelian disorders. Next, there are chromosomal disorders. Chromosomal disorders which means the entire chromosomal problems one extra chromosome one less chromosome half of the chromosome is gone then what kind of diseases you will get for example like down syndrome in down syndrome you will get one extra chromosome chromosome number like trisomy 21 getting one extra chromosome in turner syndrome one chromosome is lost one x chromosome is lost then turner syndrome okay one extra x chromosome clinical syndrome these are all the chromosomal disorders okay edward syndrome one extra 18 chromosome patau syndrome one extra 13 chromosome so they are the chromosomal disorders Okay, for example, okay, let me write it here itself. Edward, Edward syndrome, Patau, extra eight, uh, extra thirteen chromosome. Okay, trisomy thirteen. Edward is trisomy eighteen. Next, Downs, that is trisomy twenty one. Turner's, Turner's is uh, monosomy X X zero forty five X zero one when one X chromosome is lost. Klinefelter. Clenny filter that is XXY, one extra X chromosome. So these are all the chromosomal disorders. Problem with the level of the chromosome, problem at the level of the chromosomes, either extra chromosome or loss of the chromosome. And last one is multifactorial. Multifactorial inheritance. Okay, the multifactorial inheritance disorders, which means there are multiple factors involved in the development of a disease. Multiple factors are involved. For example, there are heart diseases. Like for example, like hypertension, it's have multiple factors, lifestyle, genetics, okay, the type of food he is eating, the type of environment he is working. For example, like so even cleft lip and palate, diabetes mellitus, cleft lip, cleft lip and palate. See, these are certain diseases in which there is multifactorial uh, inheritance is in. Okay. Now, having said that, first let's begin with the autosomal dominant disorders. Autosomal. We are starting with the Mendelian disorders. Mendelian disorders include autosomal dominant, autosomal residue, x linked wrong dominant, x linked residue. First, autosomal dominant. So, now let's begin with the autosomal dominant disorders. See, in autosomal dominant disorders, okay, out, out of all the diseases, it is the most common. Okay. Most common mode of Inheritance. Okay, the, what is the most common mode of inheritance? Autosomal dominant residue, X-linked dominant residue. This is most common. Autosomal dominant disorders are most common. So what about the penetrance? 
of these diseases. Let me show you. Penetrance. Penetrance is incomplete. Incomplete penetrance is going to be seen. And what about the expressivity? Expressivity is also going to be very much variable. Very much variable or wide expressivity is going to be seen. Now, I will explain you. Don't worry what exactly is this penetrance, what exactly is expressivity in a moment. But just remember, in autosomal dominant conditions, the patient is going to have incomplete penetrance. Penetrance is incomplete. And expressivity is also going to be very much variable or wide expressivity is going to be seen. Okay. Now, first of all, let me write what exactly is penetrance. Okay. Look, what exactly is this penetrance, sir? Okay, let me write here. Penetrance. See, penetrance means how often does someone, how often does someone with the genotype, how often does someone with the genotype actually show the corresponding phenotype? Okay, corresponding phenotype. See, for example, there is someone who is having a mutation. For example, let me put, uh, let me show you this uh, this one. Okay, this is a funny thing which I have found it on the internet. But anyway, this is going to work fine. See, all these individuals. For example, here, how many individuals are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, 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 eighteen. There are eighteen individuals. All these eighteen individuals is having the same mutation. Same mutation. Okay, they are having the same mutation, mutation with the size of their ears. All their genotype is same. So, same genotype. Now, I am asking you, everyone is having the same genetic makeup, but does everyone is having the same phenotype? Okay, all of them are having the same mutation, same genotype, but every one of them is having the same features, same phenotype. I am asking you, see, out of this 18, look here. This individual is normal, this individual is normal, 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 normal. So normal individuals, though they are having the same genotype, how often the phenotype, the corresponding phenotype is going to be expressed? So in this, I can say the penetrance is incomplete. This is an incomplete penetrance, though the patient is having the same genotype, same mutation, but everyone is not manifesting the bigger ears. Okay, bigger ears are not getting manifested. So... I can say this is incomplete penetrance. So now look at this definition. How often does someone with the genotype, how often does someone with the genotype actually, uh, like uh, genotype actually show or actually show the, okay, actually show the corresponding phenotype. Okay, out of this 18, here I can say, out of this 18 individuals, how many of them out of 18, how many of them are actually having the genetic makeup? Say for example, uh, sorry, how many of them are actually showing the results? See 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So this 11 out of 18, only 11 out of 18 individuals, okay, only 11 out of 18 individuals are having the penetrance. So not 18 out of 18, only 11 out of 18 is showing the phenotype. So the penetrance is, I can say here, it's incomplete penetrance. It's incomplete penetrance. Okay. So autosomal dominant diseases is going to show this. For example, I'm having the, see, for example, there is this one person who is having the same genes, some same mutation, autosomal dominant disease is having the same genetic makeup. Even I'm having the same genetic makeup, but I may not manifest the disease, but he is manifesting the disease. So those, see, we are having the same genotypes are there. But still some individuals won't develop the disease. Still some individuals, uh, some individuals won't develop the disease. That's called as incomplete penetrance. Though I am having the same genetic makeup as of a diseased person, but I am not manifesting the disease. So that is called as incomplete penetrance is seen with which diseases? Autosomal dominant diseases. Incomplete penetrance. Then what exactly is expressivity? Okay. So let me write here expressivity. What exactly is expressivity? So what exactly I mean by expressivity? Expressivity means variation in the severity. Okay. Expressivity is variation 
in severity variation in severity or you can say variation in expression of phenotype variation in expression of phenotype so what do i mean by for example look here see there are 18 individuals see in this 18 individuals are having the same genotype okay same genotype is there but only 11 individuals are showing the phenotype 11 individuals are showing the phenotype means bigger bigger size ears but my question to you see out of this 11 individuals who are having the disease do they have same expressivity same phenotype yes they are having bigger ears but all of them are having the same type of ears same type of bigger ears no for example look here these fellows are having bigger ears okay that's good but these individuals are having a different type of ears these individuals are having a different type of ears okay are you able to understand so even those individuals who are showing the phenotype even those individuals who are showing that phenotype the phenotype is different different so what exactly i mean by see for example i'm having autosomal dominant disorder my friend is having an autosomal do dominant disorder see both of us are having the same autosomal dominant disorders okay for example i'm having the marfan syndrome he is also having the marfan syndrome autosomal dominant disease the kind of symptoms that is seen in me the kind of symptoms that is expressed in the other fellow may be different it might not be the same it's not always same symptoms the level of expression of my symptoms and the level of expression of his symptoms will be different i might be having more severe symptoms he might be having more milder symptoms so that is expressivity for example see this is what i am discussing so these are all the individuals who are having the bigger ears okay all these individuals are having the bigger ears okay out of 18 this 11 out of 18 11 are having the bigger ears which means 61 percent the penetrance the this is the penetrance penetrance is 61 percent but what about the expressivity even in this 11 okay even in this 11 there is a different different phenotypes different different expressions their symptoms are different their phenotypes are different that is called as expressivity okay see even these fellows who are having the bigger ears okay for example see this is a different example see now here what i have shown all these fellows wh whoever i am marking okay these fellows they go they are having bigger ears and that too same type of bigger ears see same type of bigger ears so now what i will say is here in this condition penetrance is less it is incomplete penetrance but what about the expressivity every fellow here see every fellow is having same type of ears so now in this example i will say penetrance is incomplete but what about the expressivity expressivity is very very uh, narrow narrow expressivity okay narrow expressivity everyone is having the same type of features so there is a no wide expression there is narrow expressivity is going to be seen okay but it is seen with the autosomal recessive disorders but in autosomal dominant disorders what i want you to know is penetrance is incomplete expressivity is wide different different symptoms will be seen in different different patients some patients will have mild symptoms some patients will have more severe symptoms okay even in if even in some patients who are having the same genetic makeup i am having the same genetic makeup my friend is having the same genetic makeup he might be getting a disease i might not be getting a disease that is incomplete penetrance okay so it's completed so penetrance and expressivity are completed now after this let's begin with let's begin with first autosomal dominant disorders autosomal dominant disorders so what are the example of autosomal dominant disorders i used to remember something like this anything which begins with a hereditary first let's begin there is a very big list almost 15 16 diseases will come hereditary spherocytosis hereditary spherocytosis do you remember hereditary spherocytosis is because of what defect in the ankyrin ankyrin a peripheral protein ankyrin okay defect in the ankyrin sir so this ankyrin gone hereditary spherocytosis the rpcs are going to be round in size okay round round shaped are not round in size round shaped rpcs okay hereditary spherocytosis next hnpcc hnpcc hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer also called as which syndrome lynch syndrome okay lynch syndrome sir so hnpcc or lynch syndrome autosomal dominant disorders third one hereditary 
ఎడిట్ రేట్ ఇలా అని చెప్పి ఏసియాస్ ఓకే హెడిడ్రీ టు లాంగ్జెక్ట్ ఏసియాస్ అగైన్ సో వేర్ ఎవర్ యూ సీ ద వర్డ్ హెడిడ్రీ హెడిడ్రీ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ డామినెంట్ థింగ్స్ లైక్ వాట్ ఎవర్ యూ ఆర్ గెటింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ యూర్ ఆన్సెస్టర్స్ ద డామినెంట్ ఫీచర్స్ సో హెడిడ్రీ స్వెరోసైటోసిస్ హెడిడ్రీ నాన్ పాలిపోసిస్ కోలరెక్కల్ క్యాన్సర్ ఆల్సో కాల్స్ లిన్ సిండ్రోమ్ హెడిడ్రీ టీ లాంగ్జెక్ట్ ఏసియాస్ ఆర్ 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 డామినెంట్ నెక్స్ట్ హెడిడ్రీ సంథింగ్ లైక్ ఫెమిలియల్ రైట్ ఫ్యామిలీ ఇన్వాల్వ్డ్ ఓకే సో ఎనీథింగ్ విచ్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ ద వర్డ్ ఫ్యామిలీ దే ఆర్ ఆల్సో ఆర్డోజమల్ డామినెంట్ సో ఫెమిలియల్ adenomatous polyposis so familial endomatous polyposis fap okay where lots and lots of uh, polyps are going to be there in the colon okay hundreds and hundreds of polyps are going to be there familial endomatous polyposis and familial hypercholesterolemias familial hyper cholesterol emia okay hyper familial hypercholesterolemia they are done now so anything which starts with the word hereditary or anything which starts with the word familial autosomal dominant next thing how i used to remember is so hunting okay hunting hunting is a dominant sport right which usually done by the kings it's a dominant thing hunting so hunting tons disease hunting tons which is abnormal movement disorder where the gaba neurons gabanergic neurons are damaged gabanergic neurons are damaged in the the striatum huntington's disease okay so huntington's hunting hunting is a dominant so autosomal dominant followed by see i used to remember like hypertrophic hypertrophy means big big means dominant hypertrophic cardiomyopathy okay hypertrophic cardiomyopathy autosomal dominant and one more disease very simple to remember that is autosomal dominant in the name itself it's there autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease kidney disease or you can also say it as adult polycystic kidney disease which is usually seen in the adults okay so this autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease in the name itself it's there autosomal dominant ad autosomal dominant okay next from here you have to uh, know a little bit uh, like you know you have to by heart a little bit so ninth one is achondroplasia achondroplasia so bone related problems achondroplasia and the next bone related problem that is osteogenesis imperfecta okay osteogenesis imperfecta and tuberosclerosis okay tuberosclerosis next achondroplasia osteogenesis uh, osteogenesis imperfecta tuberosclerosis um next one will brands disease one will brands disease okay it's a bleeding disorder one will brands disease where there is deficiency of the one will brand factor next one hip uh, one hippo lindo syndrome one hippo lindo syndrome where there is 3p deletion chromosome number 3p deletion so two v's one will brand disease as well as one hippo lindo syndrome next muscle dystonia muscular dystonia muscular dystonia pseudo para hypo uh, pseudo hypoparathyroidism pseudo hypo para thyroidism okay pseudo hypo para thyroidism uh, li fremeni syndrome next noonan syndrome okay noonan syndrome next marfan syndrome okay next neurofibromatosis okay so all these are examples of okay all these are examples of autosomal dominant conditions see just try to recap as many as possible anything which starts with the word hereditary so hereditary hereditary spherocytosis hereditary telangiectasias hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer this three are autosomal dominant familial hypercholesterolemia familial endomatous polyposis autosomal dominant condition after that huntington disease hypertrophic cardiomyopathy von willebrand's disease von hippel lindo syndrome muscular dystonia uh, muscular dystonia lee farmeni syndrome as well as uh, noonan syndrome marfan syndrome neurofibromatosis 
ओके आटोसोमल डोमिनेंट पॉलिसिस्टिक किडनी डिसीज एकांड्रोप्लेशिया आस्ट्रियोजेनेसिस इम्परफेक्टा ट्यूबरोस्क्लेरोसिस ऑल दिस आर कमिंग अंडर आटोसोमल डोमिनेंट डिसीजेस ओके सुडो हाइपोपैराथायराइडिज्म ऑल दिस आर कमिंग अंडर आटोसोमल डोमिनेंट डिसीजेस नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द इंपॉर्टेंट आटोसोमल डोमिनेंट डिसीजेस फर्स्ट we have seen this is the list okay this list you have to buy hard there is no doubt you have to buy hard it by forming some mnemonic there are multiple mnemonics which are available in the internet you can either go through them but you cannot retain them for longer time okay just try to buy hard them as much as you can okay just buy hard them now after this let's see what are the important autosomal dominant disorders important autosomal dominant diseases important in the sense for your exams okay important autosomal dominant diseases the first disease that i am going to discuss here is called as a marfan syndrome marfan syndrome so in this marfan syndrome what is the gene defect which gene is defective gene defect okay which gene is defect see the gene defect the gene is fibrillin i used to remember like marfan marfan f word that f F stands for fibrillin. Fibrillin one is defective. This gene, it's a gene. Fibrillin one gene. This is defective. So which, is, where exactly is this gene present? Fibrillin one gene is present on the chromosome number fifteen. Chromosome number fifteen. Okay. So which protein is defective? Which protein? Now obviously fibrillin. So fibrillin protein is first affected. Okay, it's a defective protein because the fibrillin is defective. It's 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 gone because of that. One his friend is also gone. For example, if you are bad, your friend will also automatically become like you know like you like your worst guy. So in the same way, so protein that is defect is fibrillin. This fibrillin is also very much important for the cross linking of the elastin. So protein affected. Because of you, your friend is affected in the same way. Because here the fibrillin is damaged, it's gone. Negatively, elastin is also affected. So protein affected elastin. Okay, elastin is affected. Okay. Now in this condition called as a Marfan syndrome, if you check the blood levels, see one thing is very much clear. In this patient, the TGF beta, transforming growth factor beta levels are elevated. these levels are highly elevated and it accounts for the damage more and more damage okay so what we have to do is we have to decrease this tgf beta levels transforming growth factor beta levels should be reduced so inhibit how we can inhibit this by giving a drug called as losartan okay by giving this drug called as losartan you can actually decrease the transforming growth factor beta levels so that the clinical features which are seen in the marfan syndromes can be controlled we haven't discussed about the clinical features we will discuss now okay so in marfan syndrome marfan f for fibrillin one gene is defective so fibrillin protein is defective because of this fibrillin defect which protein is affected it's a elastin protein is affected it's a connective tissue disorder marfan syndrome is connective tissue disorder so the connective tissues are not strong enough the connective tissues are not properly developed okay so what are the clinical features which are seen let's take a list here clinical features clinical features are going to be first mitral valve prolapse one of the most important causes of the mitral valve prolapse is a marfan syndrome so the mitral valve which is present in the heart the left side of the heart the mitral valve is going to be prolapsed into the left atrium with every heart beat mitral valve prolapse that can even lead to the mitral regurgitation okay so mitral valve prolapse second one aortic see in aorta there is so much pressure in the body the most highest pressures in the entire cardiovascular system is there in the aorta so your connective tissue the aorta is also made up of the same connective tissue right same fibers are going to be there here in the aorta as a connective tissue is weak connective tissue now such high pressures can tear the wall of the aorta can tear such high pressure blood is not strong enough now the aorta is not strong enough such high pressures in the aorta can easily tear the aortic wall into two layers so that's called as aortic dissection that can be seen okay aortic dissection so mitral valve prolapse aortic dissection next these patients are going to have retinal detachment okay retinal detachment 
Next. Next one, the point which I want you to know is the mitral wall prolapse, aortic dissection, retinal detachment. So these patients are going to have, if you look at their hands, their hands, the fingers are going to be slender and going to be long. So they just resembles uh, like a legs of a spider. So they are called as arachnodactyly. Okay, they are called as arachnodactyly. And if you look at their, um, if you look at their uh, palate, okay, it's going to be high arched palate. It's going to be high arched. It's going to be high arched palate. And they're going to have nearsightedness. Okay, it's going to be nearsightedness. Next, what else they are going to have is subluxated lens. Subluxated lens. That's the lens is going to be displayed from its original position. That is called as the ectopia. Ectopia lentis. Okay, ectopia lentis is going to be there. So where exactly the lens is going to be dislocated? To which direction the lens is going to be exactly dislocated? Okay, that is superior temporal dislocation. Supero temporal dislocation of the lens. So, supero temporal dislocation of the lens is going to be seen. If you look at these persons who are having this Marfan syndrome, they are going to have the bent, okay, in the spinal cord, uh, in the spinal cord, that's called as a scoliosis. Okay, they are, paying, they are going to have scoliosis. And what else? If you look at the chest, it's going to look like a pigeon shaped chest. Pigeon shape chest. So all these are the clinical features which are seen in the Marfan syndrome. So Marfan syndrome, mitral wall prolapse, okay, uh, mitral wall prolapse, aortic dissection, retinal detachment, uh, arachnodactyly, high arch palate, nearsightedness, subluxated lens, okay, scoliosis, pigeon shaped chest, all these things are going to be seen, okay. Let me show you the image, see here, patient is tall and slender. Here the patient is tall and slender, such kind of morphological appearance is called as a Marfanoid habitus. Okay, Marfan features. Here the female is having that scoliosis is seen, very much appreciated scoliosis. Next, if you look at their fingers, see how they are, these are arachnodactyly. Okay, arachnodactyly, here also arachnodactyly, scoliosis is seen, pigeon shaped chest and look, there is a high arched palate. Okay, there can be pectus carinatum, pectus excavatum can also be seen, that is the chest deformities here. See, it's like outside, okay, pigeon shaped. So here you can see the dislocation, there is a temporal, supero temporal dislocation of the lens can be seen, aortic dissection can be seen, okay. And one more sign which can be seen in these patients are, see, if you do like this, okay. So in, the, in these patients who are having uh, Marfan syndrome, actually, see, these fingers are totally coming and like they are, uh, how to say, they are sliding over the other means they are having very thin limbs okay this sign is called as a walker sign okay this sign is called as a walker sign okay walker sign is going to be seen and one more sign which can be seen is see whenever they do like this see in a normal person this is the thumb right so whenever we do like this this thumb will never come out it will never come out but in these patients who are having this marfan syndrome whenever they do like this see the finger is even going to be shown outside. The sign is called as Steinberg sign. So these patients are having Steinberg sign, you can see, and also Walker sign. So Walker sign, you know it. See, when a normal person, in a normal person, when we do like this, the fingers, both this, like, you know, the thumb and this fingers, they are just touching, okay? They are not superimposing. They are not going something like that. They are just usually, they will, they will touch. They will approach each other, something. But in these patients, they are going to overlap. There's going to be over, overlapping. That's called as Walker sign. So, in Marfan syndrome, the point which I want you to know is arachnodactyly, superior temporal dislocation of the lens, high arch palates, scoliosis is going to be seen, aortic dissection is going to be seen, mitral or prolapse. And the point which I want you to know, the important point, that is, what kills these patients? Okay, what kills these patients? The most common cause of death. Most common cause of death in Marfans. It is aortic dissection. Okay, aortic dissection is the most common cause of death in Marfan syndrome. Next, look at here, in this slide, see these are the clinical features, 
uh, how to confirm the diagnosis. Okay, the diagnosis, the some points which I want you to know from the slide. I have taken this from internet, uh, but I find it little informative. See, what is the mode of inheritance? You know it. It's an autosomal dominant disease because of which gene mutation? It's a fibrillin one, fibrillin one gene mutation. Okay, FBN one, fibrillin one gene mutation. So, how to confirm the diagnosis of morphins? See, there is a criteria called as Jens criteria. Okay, Jens criteria, Jens criteria. So, just the name is enough. You don't need to go in details about what, what is the Jens criteria. Actually, there are See, some major criteria are there. Okay, you know the clinical features, the same clinical features. Three of them are considered as a major criteria like ectopia lentis, that's the superior temporal dislocation of the lens and aortic dilatation or aortic dissection. If the patient is having aortic dissection or if there is any family history, these three are considered as a major criteria. The rest of the others, okay, the rest of the others can be considered as a minor criteria and they are given the scores, the respective scores were given. No need to go into them to that much detail. Simple, what is the diagnostic criteria for the Marfan's Jens criteria? Okay, see, so how to put the diagnosis? How many criteria are required? At least if the patient is having two major criteria, out of these three, the patient is having two major criteria, yes, that's it, he is having Marfan's. Or one major criteria is there and you know that this patient is having fibrillin 1 gene mutation. Okay, if the, if the patient is having fibrillin 1 gene mutation, yes, that he is having Marfan's syndrome. Or one major criteria is there and he is having a score greater than 7. Okay, if he is getting a score greater than 7, yes, then he is having Marfan syndrome. That's it. See here, what is the most common cardiac defect? Mitral wall prolapse. What is going to kill the patient? Aortic dissection. See, what is the most common cause of death? It is a cardiovascular complication. That is, aortic dissection is going to kill this patient. Next, after this, let us discuss about other autosomal dominant important disorder. Important other autosomal dominant disorder that is called the neurofibromatosis. Neurofibro Matosis, neurofibromatosis. So, how many types of neurofibromatosis are there? There are two types of neurofibromatosis. Actually, there are two genes NF1, neurofibromatosis type 1, and neurofibromatosis type 2. So, in neurofibromatosis type 1, what is the gene that is mutated? Sir, in neurofibromatosis type 1, the on chromosome number 17, okay, on chromosome number 17, there is this NF1 gene present. So, gene name is also NF1, neurofibromatosis type 1 gene, NF1 gene is mutated. In neurofibromatosis type 2, NF2 gene is mutated on chromosome number 22. Okay, so same genes, neurofibromatosis type 1 gene, neurofibromatosis type 2 gene. They are mutated on chromosome number 17 as well as chromosome number 22, 17, 22. See, in neurofibromatosis type 1, which protein is going to be affected? Gene mutation is there. If, if, if a gene is mutated, definitely protein is going to be affected, right? Which protein is affected? Then affected protein is called as neurofibromin. Neurofibromin is going to be affected. In neurofibromatosis type 2, who is going to be affected? Merlin. Okay, Merlin is going to be affected. Neurofibromin as well as Merlin. Now, in neurofibromatosis type 1, okay, in type 1, what are the clinical features that are going to be seen? The patient is going to have the spots, this kind of spots on the skin, okay, he is going to have that coffee shaped, coffee colored, sorry, coffee colored spots are going to be seen on the skin. They are called as cafe LA spots, cafe LA spots, okay, such cafe LA spots are going to be seen. And not only that, if you look at their eyes, there is going to be something called as leash nodules, okay, there is going to be leash nodules are going to be seen. Okay, these are the leash nodules. Leash nodules are going to be seen. What exactly are the leash nodules? They are, they are pigmented. They are pigmented hematomas in iris. They are pigmented hematomas in iris. It's only seen in neurofibromatosis type 1. It's only seen in the neurofibromatosis type 1. Apart from that, in neurofibromatosis type 1, the patient is having cafe LA spots, uh, leash nodules are going to be seen. The third thing which is seen is called as optic nerve gliomas. Optic nerve is going to be affected. Optic nerve gliomas. Next, these patients are at a risk of getting a cancer which is called as juvenile myelomonocytic. Myelomonocytic leukemias. So, the points which I want you to know is uh, in the patient who is having neurofibromatosis type 1, neurofibromatosis type 1 gene is mutated on chromosome number 17, the protein that is going to be affected is the neurofibromin. In this patient, the patient is going to have the cafe LA spots, okay, these coffee colored spots are going to be seen. In the eye, there is going to be leash nodules, okay, leash nodules are going to be seen. These are hyperpigmented, 
hematomas okay and there will be optic nerve involvement optic nerve gliomas are going to be seen as well as juvenile mono myos uh, juvenile myelomonocytic leukemia is going to be seen see here in neurofibromatosis type 1 see optic nerve gliomas optic nerve involvement is seen leash nodules are going to be seen cafe alice parts are going to be seen neurofibromas are going to be seen yes of course other things are also going to be seen but these are the main important ones okay next in neurofibromatosis type 2 let me write here itself sir in neurofibromatosis type 2 what the patient is going to have the patient is going to manifest schwannomas schwannomas Sir, the patient is going to have the schwannomas. Schwannomas are the tumors around which neurons, especially which, uh, which, uh, sorry, which cranial nerve is going to be affected. So, the schwannomas are going to affect cranial nerve number 8. That's the vestibular cochlear nerve. Okay. Schwannomas are nothing but the tumor of Schwann cells. It's a tumor of Schwann cells. Schwann cells are the myelinating cells in the peripheral nervous system. So, those who ever have this neurofibromatosis type 2, they are going to manifest the schwannomas. 8th cranial nerve is going to be affected. That's the vestibular cochlear nerve is going to be affected. Next, these patients are going to have meningiomas as well as ependymomas. Okay, meningiomas as well as ependymomas are going to be seen. The next autosomal dominant disorder which I want to discuss here is called as a tuberosclerosis. Tuberosclerosis. So, what exactly is happening in the tuberosclerosis? What is the gene mutation? Okay, what is the gene mutation? The gene mutation is a TSC gene. Okay, tuberosclerosis gene mutation. Okay, it's a tuberosclerosis gene mutation. Now, see there are two TSC genes, TSC1 as well as TSC2. Tuberosclerosis 1 gene, tuberosclerosis 2 gene. There are two genes for the tuberosclerosis. If tuberosclerosis 1 gene, if it is a defective, if it is a mutated, then it is going to uh, affect which protein? Hamartin. Okay, it's Hamartin is a protein which is coded by TSC1. If TSC2 is mutated, or TSC2 codes for which protein? Tuberin. Tuberin. It's going to be affected. So, the point which I want you to know is that there is autosomal dominant condition which is called as a tuberosclerosis, which is very important for your exam. There are two genes for tuberosclerosis TSC1 gene, TSC2 gene. TSC1 gene, if it is mutated, Hamartin is going to be affected. If TSC2 gene is uh, uh, mutated, then tuberin is going to be affected. So, those who ever have tuberosclerosis, they are going to manifest these symptoms. Okay, I have discussed about the Marfan syndrome, autosomal dominant condition and the symptoms. I have discussed about the neurofibromatosis, type 1, type 2 neurofibromatosis as well as the symptoms. Now, I am discussing about the third condition which is called as a tuberosclerosis, okay, and the symptoms. First, I have discussed about the Marfan syndrome. Second, I have discussed about the neurofibromatosis, now about the tuberosclerosis. See, those who ever have the tuberosclerosis, autosomal dominant condition, they are going to have this, uh, the mnemonic, the mnemonic follows something like this, ash leaf, A-S-H, L-E-F, ash leaf. So, what is this ash leaf, sir? On their skin, they are going to have this hypopigmented areas, which are called as ash leaf spots, or ash leaf macules. This ash leaf macules are going to be seen on the skin. They are hypopigmented areas. Next. And their lumbar area, especially on the lumbar area, they are going to have this thick leathery patch kind of appearance. Thick leathery patch, which is called as a chagrin patch. In the heart, they are going to have the tumors called as a heart rhabdomyomas. It's a, tu it's a, it's a tumor for the muscle. Okay, heart rhabdomyomas are going to be seen. Okay, now in the lung, you are going to see lung lymphangioliomyomatosis. They can be, have, they can have the epilepsy. Because, so, in these patients, they can have the epilepsy. Epilepsy, what is, what exactly is epilepsy? It's a, Tumors, uh, sorry, uh, epilepsy seizures, continuous, continuous seizures, multiple seizures are coming. So, that's epilepsy. So, epilepsy can be there because of the cortical tubers. Okay, in the cortex, small, small tumor-like growths can be seen. Those are the tubers, small, small tubers are going to be seen. So, that causes epilepsy. And in the kidney, very, very important kidney, the patient is going to have angio uh, angiomyolipomas. In the kidney, there can be a tumors called as angiomyolipomas, which are the benign tumors of the kidney. Can be seen in tuberous sclerosis and facial angiofibromas. So, angiofibromas are small, small tumor-like growths. Okay, that is the tuberosclerosis. So, with this, we have completed the autosomal dominant conditions. Again, again, I am telling you, autosomal dominant conditions, see, they do not have complete penetrance. There is going to be a wide expressivity, wide range of symptoms. Okay, two patients having the same disease, but the symptoms can be different. That's a 
expressivity is going to be different. And what are the important examples of the autosomal dominant conditions? The important examples of the autosomal dominant conditions are going to be, I have given you almost 17, I think. Okay, yeah, 17 diseases I have gave. Anything which starts with the hereditary or anything which starts with the familial, hunters, uh, sorry, not hunters, sorry, not the hunters, Huntington's. Okay, Huntington's chorea and autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, uh, this uh, syndrome which is called as a Lee Fermani syndrome, Marfan syndrome, Noonan syndrome, neurofibromatosis, tuberosclerosis, okay, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, and uh, osteogenesis imperfecta, achondroplasia, e one Willebrand's disease, one Hippolyne disease, uh, disease uh, pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, all these are the examples of autosomal dominant conditions, and don't ever forget about the Marfan's, very, very important, mitral wall prolapse, arachnodactyly, superior temporal dislocation of the lens, Okay, Marfan syndrome, most common cause of death is aortic dissection. Okay, gents criteria. Next, next important autosomal dominant condition. What is that? Next important autosomal dominant condition is neurofibromatosis. Two types. Neurofibromatosis type 1, type 2. In type 1, the patient is going to have lish nodules. Only in type 1, lish nodules are going to be seen. Cafe LS parts are going to be seen. The patient is at risk of getting a cancer which is called as uh, myelomonocytic leukemia. Okay, myelomonocytic leukemia is going to be seen. Next, in neurofibromatosis type 2, the patient is going to have the meningiomas. The patient is going to have uh, schwannomas. And the last one, uh, which I want you to know, is the disease called as the tuberosclerosis, where the patient is going to have symptoms, which is called a ash leaf. Okay, ash leaf spots, chagrin patches, lymphangiomyomatosis in the lungs. There can be angio uh, angiomyolipoma in the kidney. There can be heart rhabdomyomas. So these are the important clinical features which I want you to know for your exam. So with this, we have completed the autosomal dominant conditions. Autosomal dominant conditions are completed. In the next video, we will discuss about autosomal recessive conditions followed by X-linked dominant and X-linked recessive conditions. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.